Uh oh. No, 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 ver apart. Charge uh, preferences. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> I was scared for a second there. I'm like, did I download? Did I define a different download? Did I do it wrong? I knew. That's a much shorter translation than what it said originally, I don't think. What is your name? What's the default? Let's find out. Prologue. Day one. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> You're leaving tomorrow. Who knows when we'll meet again? One last song? Please? I scratch my thin... My th <laughs> I scratch my chin, thoughtfully. It was obvious I wanted to sing. There was nothing wrong with a bit of teasing. It's much more fun to accept without hesitation. I don't know. So it looks like the default name's Eric. After all, if you really cared about me, I don't think you would have left me with an empty mug for so long. I shake the aforementioned mug in front of my audience as I grossly exaggerate my sorrow. A bit dramatic, but it was part of the job. And it looks like it worked. I can hear a few laughs echoing among the members of my band. My old band. Tomorrow, at dawn, they will leave towards the east of the kingdom while I will be traveling to the north, the, s the capital city, Frostfang. Our paths will split, and it's impossible to know when we will be together again. New thing added to notes. Do 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 do. Frostfang. I don't think the. Oop. I don't think I can select it with a controller. Bloop. I don't know whose bright idea it was to name the kingdom and the capital the same way, but boy, is it a pain in the ass. You always have to specify what you're talking about. But yes, Frostfang, my country, and Frostfang, its capital. We occupy we occupy the whole northern part of the continent, and it's and we're freezing our asses off. <laughs> the touring bands and musicians aren't known to be predictable in their pathing, especially Rager's band. Innkeeper, you've heard Long Ears. Fill his mug. We'll pay for him. Long Ears? Really? Not very original. After emptying half a barrel, I feel a bit more playful. Now that his lordship's mug is full, is it possible to hear him sing? I smile while looking at my mug, before finally sticking my tongue out at my companions. I look around me trying to find a small fennec in the crowd and nodding my head when I see her. Lina, uh, Lyanna, can you give me the pleasure of a melody? Sure. Do we go with something joyful? I nod briefly to answer Lyanna's, Lyanna's question as she pulls her tambourine out of the satchel. I then stand up, having always preferred to perform that, that way, the way, while my partner briefly closes her eyes, she concentrates to make the, br the brand in the shape of a circle imprinted on her shoulder glow. She was, lucky she was lucky to wear the brand of Ilaria, the goddess of light, one of the most sought after brands among the artists. When her fingers brush the leather of her instrument, they leave behind a trail of blue light, gently vibrating to the rhythm she begins to create. Each new note launches a wave, which collides with the others, the colors varying and changing between the different waves. I can't help but be jealous. Being the only member of the band who hasn't yet received his brand tends to do that to you. I'm 22, and it's a bit late to be branded. Most people had theirs during their teenage years. I know that it will eventually appear, that one of the twelve gods will choose me. Everyone gets a brand, sooner or later. But patience has never been my strong suit, and it was starting to be a really long wait. I hope it'd be worth it. Not knowing which god would choose me was frustrating. I could get the light or air brand, which would be perfect for my musical performances, or I'd get the war brand, and that'd be useless to me. 
but I don't have time to think about it any longer. I have an audience to satisfy, and a song to perform. After letting Leanna play for a while, I open my jaw wide, and the lyrics come out in rhythm with our music. As far as I can remember, I've always loved being in front of a crowd. Dancing, singing, or just making people laugh was my own little passion. Not wanting to brag, but I'm good at it. Really good. I know how to hypnotize my audience, and how to attract attention. I make up for my small size with boundless energy, bouncing around like the white rabbit I am. Accompanying Liana's music, I start to sing a drinking song. It was only appropriate given our location. Each pause in the melody is the occasion to take a sip and have fun in the crowd. I find myself quickly standing on a table, making large gestures and pointing at my companions when it's their turn to empty their mug, which they obviously do without hesitation. One after another, their voices accompany mine, which makes me smile even more. It was my last night with these people, and I fully intend to enjoy the moment until my voice would break. And now, raise your mug and drink, drink, drink. As requested by the song, I empty my mug in one in one gulp, clicking my tongue when it's done and bowing in front of my audience. As I get up, I stick my tongue out at those who were still looking at me, and I wink at them as I come down to the table. You know, Eric, I think I'll never get tired of hearing you sing. Rager. I, it could be Ragor, but... Rager is funnier because they're drinking and partying and being a band. <laughs> I was afraid I wouldn't see you again till tomorrow morning. And missing the party? Never. Plus, I wanted to see you. To talk a bit in private. If you don't mind leaving your audience, of course. I take a moment to look at the crowd and I see that they're very busy emptying their mugs and loudly chattering with each other. I believe they can survive without me for a few minutes. As if my crowd wanted to contradict me, the sound of shattered glass reached my ears, making me wince briefly. Well, I hoped they could survive without me for a few minutes. I'm starting to wonder what you'll do when I'm gone. Rager answers me to laugh, obviously not sharing my concerns. He then beckons me to follow him, and we both go and sit at a small secluded table, away from the noise. The Labrador sits... Uh, sighs heavily as he sits, losing his gaze in mine, which caused me to squirm uncomfortably in my seat. Rager's eyes had always made me feel as if they were piercing straight through my head, as if he always knew what I was thinking, even when I tried to hide it. So, Eric, you sure you're ready for tomorrow? As ready as I can be. I know the road, although usually I'm with you. Plus, it's only a, a two-day trip. I should be okay. That's precisely what worries me. It's been a long time since you were alone. The last time. Rager, no. It's not the same situation. I just want to make sure. I said no. I have absolutely no intention to talk about what happened three years ago. No. It's locked up in my head. We don't need to talk about that again. I stare at Rager, as serious as I can, sighing when I see the Labrador looking away. I just want to check one last time. Are you really sure you want to go? You know we always love to have you at our sides. I know this is a golden opportunity, and I'm proud that you're becoming independent. After all, it's the best way to improve yourself. That doesn't mean I'm happy to see you leave. I would love to stay with the band, Rager, but to be a loyal bard? Uh, to be a royal bard? This is an opportunity I have to take. Unless you don't think I can win. I give him a playful look, curious to see his reaction. Don't be ridiculous. You know how I feel about your talents. Unless you get yourself into another one of those silly situations you know so well. You should win, you should win this tournament easily. 
I don't see what you... Do I really have to remind you what happened at Kaelt? How would I have known he was engaged? Or in Tenarian? I told you it was an accident. Mermian. Alright. Alright, I get it. I promise not to slip in any other bed but mine by the end of the contest. How does that sound to you? Slip? Not sleep? Maybe. I guess that's all I can, I can hope for. Seriously though, Eric, try not to create any diplomatic incident, okay? I mumble and shrug as an answer. Sure, there had been a few incidents before, but I was perfectly capable of controlling myself. He makes me look like a much bigger pervert than I am. There was a moment of silence between us, but that doesn't bother me. We've known each other long enough that we've been accustomed to these moments. When I look up to him again, I see a smile stretching his chops, and I feel like joining him. Hey, Rager? Yeah? I, uh... I just wanted to thank you. Thank me? Why? For everything you've done. For welcoming me into the band. I don't think I've told you before, so I really wanted to do it before I left. I don't know where I would be if you hadn't found me and... I'm interrupted by Rager's big paw resting on my head, stroking me gently between the ears. The Labrador gives me a reassuring look, his gaze in mine, and I can feel tears forming in my eyes. Shit. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Get yourself together, Eric. You don't have to say it. Having you with us has been a pleasure. A bit complicated at first, I'm not gonna lie to you. You caused a few surprises, but it was a pleasure nonetheless. The best way to thank me is to go to Frostfang, impress the kings, and become the court bard. Make us proud, Eric. That's all I ask of you. He withdraws his paw before smiling at me as I get a few cheeks. Uh, uh. I'm not breathing enough between lines. <laughs> as I feel my cheeks flush under my fur. I was going to miss Rager once I was gone. I have no doubts about that. That lovely little moment quickly stops when I see Rager's smile widen even more. His white fangs now almost entirely revealed under his chops. Oh no. He always makes that face when he's about to embarrass me. Now, if you really want to make me happy, Rager, you can always find a sweet boyfriend there. Something lasting, you know. Rager, please. I shrivel up in my seat, getting lower and lower as I try to hide behind the table. This is not the first time Rager has brought up the subject. I know exactly where he plans to go next, and I really don't want to talk about it. Maybe even thinking about adopting kids, hmm? I could teach them not to be like their father. Please, Rager, stop it. I'm way too young to think about that. I don't have any kids anyway. I value my freedom. And who knows? It could be an opportunity for me to settle down somewhere once and for all. I could be Grandpa Rager and... I don't see how getting the kids get, lets you settle down. All right, it's time to get out of here. I need a subtle escape. Would you look at that? It, it's uh, it's getting pretty late. Uh, I think it's time to go to sleep. I've got a long road ahead of me. Very subtle, Eric. Very subtle. I get up quickly so that the Labrador doesn't have time to convince me to stay, but I'm interrupted by his laugh. He obviously got what he wanted. It was too late to hide my embarrassment. Before you go to sleep, Erwin wants to see you. Erwin, do you know why? I believe he has a gift for you. Erwin is one of the caravan's guards responsible for our protection during the tours. We got along quite well, but he didn't strike me as the kind of guy to give parting gifts. He's upstairs, so you're running to him anyway. I'll see what he wants from me. Good night, Rager, and try to keep in touch with me, okay? I promise you we'll see you each other uh, we'll see each other soon. 
Goodbye, Eric. And good luck. With one last look, I finally leave the Labrador behind me. It's kind of strange. I am both excited and sad about the separation. After all, I could become a royal bard. It was an opportunity not to be missed, even more so because I was sure I was good enough to win that tournament. But at the same time, I've known Rager, Erwin, and the rest of the band for the past three years. Three years without being alone, never having to think about my problems. I just had to enjoy the moment. Do I really want to leave, after all? Nobody could blame me for staying with my family, right? I'm living a good life here with them. But they are heading east, and I can't follow them. There's no way I'm going back there. No. I've made my decision. It's hard to leave this comfortable life, but I have to. After all, I'm only going to be alone during this trip. I have no doubt that once I'm in Frostfang, I'll be surrounded by a lot of good people. It's the capital city, after all. Must be bursting with life. I shake myself before heading upstairs. Erwin is waiting for me, after all, and I have to admit that I'm quite curious to see what he wants to give me. Once upstairs, I can see the wolf leaning against the wall, watching me with a dead serious stare. <gasps> oh my god, a sprite! But yeah, that's where we go, baby! We put in the visual and visual novel! <laughs> why, why am I like this? <laughs> Listen, we were looking at a wall for a while, and now we're looking at a white wolf with, uh... I guess that's a brand? That must be the brand. I briefly thought he had a tassel hanging from his eyelid, and I was upset by thinking about the physics and the tug of that, <laughs> but it makes way more sense that it's a wolf with a face tattoo wearing the Dark Souls 2 armor, uh, which is the best armor. This is actually Dark Souls 2's fursona, right here. Look at him in all of his glory and awe of the best Dark Souls game. I'm just making enemies today, that's what we're doing. He should probably wash his hands. Or is that just, oh no, he just has brand, mm? Maybe just has patches of brown everywhere. I can't tell. I thought it was blood. It took you a long time to come. Rager told me you wanted to see me, so you have a present for me? I know you leave I know you loved me deep down. Erwin grunts and rolls his eyes. Look at that. Could I be right? I can always decide not to give you anything, you know. Especially if that's the only reason you came to see me. Don't be like that. You're my favorite guard, you know. I would have come to say goodbye anyway. The gift is just the icing on the cake. I give the wolf a big smile, making myself as charming as possible. Being cute is one of, the, of my biggest perks. And I've always used that advantage. I sure hope you would. Do you know how sad a wolf can get when left alone? Before I have time to react, everyone grabs me by the hips to hug me tightly. For a brief moment, I think about resisting, but finally, I hug him back. This is the last time he can do this before... a while. Before a while? I guess that makes sense. I just would never say that. So might as well let him enjoy it. Plus, I'm not gonna complain. I get to be snuggled up against this muscular chest of a big wolf, after all. I don't think you're getting a lot of muscle through that armor. Kinda, I feel like the chainmail deadens the experience. Or when, maybe he's not wearing armor in the scene, and that's just what his sprite looks like. <clears throat> Erwin and I had a few dates together. Never anything serious. We quickly came to the conclusion that being friends with benefits was the best situation for both of us, so... This kind of closeness was not uncommon between us. In fact, it was even really welcome at the moment. I also hope you'll miss me once you get to the big city. Won't you, for won't you forget your favorite guard? I will make an effort to try to remember you. It might be difficult, though. After all, I will be the royal court at the royal court. I'm sure there are plenty of other guards just as attractive as you. Now, if I had anything to remember. To help me remember, then it would certainly be easier to think about you. I get it. Okay, you want your present. I stick my tongue out playfully. 
He knows I'm not patient, and the thought of receiving a gift doesn't help in that regard. He pushes me away, before grabbing his belt, undoing it in front of me. I can't help but chuckle a bit at his little show. Oh, that kind of gift. You could at least wait until we're in the bedroom. I'm not sure everyone would like to stumble upon that kind of performance. What? What are you ta- Oh. I see the wolf's ears drop instantly as he blushes slightly. I don't get to embarrass him often enough, and I was glad I did. That was quite the sight. Try to think with your cock, will you? You can understand why I'd be confused. Why are you taking off your belt exactly? Because you're going to need it. Here. It's for you. He hands me his belt, which still has the scabbard attached to it, and his sword sheathed inside. I look briefly at his wide smile, trying to understand why he's so proud of himself. <clears throat> um, thank you? I always appreciate a gift, but you forgot your sword. You're going to need it, and I've got plenty of weapons. So don't worry about me. I look at the blade dubiously, giving Erwin the exact same look. You know I don't like weapons, don't you? I'm not particularly good with a sword anyway. That was never my thing. You will take it. It's not negotiable. Erwin's tone is suddenly much more serious. It's strange. He never talks to me like that, usually. Why does he want to have a weapon so badly? You're going to be all alone on the road. You don't even have a brand to defend yourself. There is no way you are leaving like that. So take that sword. You keep it at your side, and if need be, you use it. I taught you the basics so you can fight. I sincerely hope you don't, you don't have to, but I will not let you go without a mean to defend yourself. That's all. I grumble slightly and end up putting on the belt tying it to my waist. Obviously, it's not my size, so I have to tighten it to the maximum, and even then, I don't like it. I feel like it doesn't fit perfectly. I feel absolutely ridiculous wearing this. I hope you're aware of that. You are exaggerating. If you weren't so cute, you'd almost be, it would almost be impressive. Almost. Erwin smiles showing his fangs as he briefly raises his eyebrows. I can't help but sigh. Subtlety has never been his strength when it came to seduction. It's not... Uh, it's not with a bit of a flirt that you're going to improve how I see myself. Uh... It's not with a bit of flirt that you're going to improve how I see myself. I'm not sure about that sentence. I know exactly what I look like. Maybe, but that, would, that could win me my parting gift, right? Oh, so there was indeed another reason you took your belt off then. And there I was, believing your thoughts were pure for once. Well, I'm not going to be able to appreciate that fine, wiggling ass of yours for a while. That's what was keeping me walking during our trips. Let me have it one last time. You're a real wordsmith, Erwin. A true gentleman. It doesn't mean that you refuse my offer. Touché. I'm obviously never against having a little fun. Especially with someone so physically pleasing, but I just promised her rager I would not sleep with anyone until the end of the contest. I don't think that's a relevant promise. First of all, you're not in the city yet where the drama would happen. It's just, it's just somebody you already have an existing relationship with. It's like, it's just, this doesn't... No! <laughs> he meant don't stir up drama and fuck up your chances at the thing. This is a totally unrelated location and context. Plus, I really need a bit of sleep, since I'm going to walk a lot tomorrow. On the other hand, the likelihood of initiating a diplomatic incident while sleeping with Erwin is pretty low. Besides, everybody knows that we sleep better after a bit of fun, right? Obviously give him his gift, what? 
It's the last time we see each other, so why not? So why not taking this opportunity to have a good time? Okay, there's definitely some translation whoops going on. I slowly slide my paw against his tangling hours fingers together as I give him my most charming smile. It's like increasing in frequency. I guess I can put the effort into one last gift. Follow me to my room. Everyone doesn't need an answer. I can see his tail wagging frantically behind him. I'll never get tired of seeing his reaction. Canons are so adorable when they do that. While guiding him to my room, I swing my hips wildly, inviting him to stare at my butt. I was determined to give him a good show before the grand finale. Mm. If you continue like this, I'm not sure I can wait until I unwrap my present. Weren't you taught patience when you were young? Come on, be brave. I laugh again at the male's impatience as we enter my room. As soon as we're inside, I feel everyone's paws gripping me to shove my back against the now closed door. The teasing was over. Now we're getting down to business. Without any hesitation, I lift my muzzle to kiss him, pushing my, pushing my tongue between his chops to lip haphazardly inside his mouth. He kisses me back as he starts to slide his paws under my clothes to stroke my chest. I feel myself shuddering under his touch. I reach down with both of my paws, slitting them under my pants to fondle his ass, causing him to growl with pleasure. I know how to please my wolf. My wolf! We hit the phrase! I pull my head back to, to briefly look at him and give him a flirtatious smile. I then lick his lips before his whispering softly. All right, big guy. Would you unpack that gift for me? All righty. I had to skip through it just because uh, I got in trouble in the past. <laughs> so I'm skipping the sex scenes, at least in the Let's Tries. Uh, but damn, there was an animation. I did not expect an animation. That is a very different art style, but still, very much do not expect animations for the sex scenes in these games. Wow. We, st we stay there for a moment, panting and lying against each other. He looks at me silently before I give him a kiss, winking at him playfully. So, how was your parting gift? As if you didn't enjoy it. Is that a bad thing? Definitely not. But I know without a doubt that I will miss our little meetings. I burst out laughing, and this time he does the same. To be honest, I think I will miss those moments too. I will miss him. We spent the next few minutes enjoying each other's presence, kissing and hugging gently. There was not much else to do until his knot had deflated. <laughs> so I, I don't have to hint what happened then. After a while, I find myself following the lines of his brand with a finger. It was a triangle underlined with multiple lines, a little below his right eye. The brand of Argon, God of Fire. You will have yours soon enough, you know. Hmm? What are you talking about? Your brand. It'll show up. Everyone gets one. I know, it's just... Why so late? I don't know anyone my age without a brand. It's frustrating to see you all do these magical things and I'm here with nothing. You remind me of my brother. I'm not sure that's what your lover wants to hear in this kind of situation, you know? I shake my ass, causing him to moan when he feels his cock moving with, with it at the, with it a the same time. It was my way of emphasizing the problem. Didn't mean that, you brat. My brother got my, his brand much later than his group of friends. Didn't appear until he was 20. He was furious about it. He was complaining all the time. I couldn't spend an evening at home without hearing him bitch about not having his brand. It was my mom who finally found a way to calm him down. She told him something like, wait, how did she say it? Ah, yes. You know, maybe your brand appears later than the others because the gods need more time to refine it. When it will take shape, it'll be the brightest and biggest of them all. You'll see. I don't know if anyone wants the biggest brand. I don't know if you want to be fighting for more real estate on your face for a tattoo. She was right, you know. He spent the ne next few days teasing everyone with his brand after he got it. I remember how proud he was. It was so big it covered his entire body. He was just... He was just an unknown from Pokemon. <laughs> you never know. Maybe it would be the same for you. 
If it takes that long, then it must mean that your brand will be unique. Much bigger than you could imagine. Can they be unique? I thought there was just 12. Maybe there's more per type or something? I remained silent. Erwin never spoke to me like that. I didn't even know he was a, had a brother until now. Being reassured by someone usually so cold was kind of heartwarming. I can feel a weight leaving my chest as I pull my muzzle toward, forward to kiss him again. Honestly, I don't know if I've had evidence that he's cold. <laughs> Thanks. I needed to hear that. He doesn't say a thing. He doesn't need to. We spend the next ten minutes in silence. I was enjoying my partner's presence until he could untie me from his knot. With one last kiss, I watch him get up and get dressed. Guess that's a goodbye, then. Looks like it. Protect the band for me, will you? I don't know what I would do with if something like happened to them. It's my job. And you. Try your best to be careful, please. I want to find you in good health when we meet again. Sure. Promised. I watch him leave and sigh. I watch him leave and sighs heavily as a hint of sadness pierces my chest. Once alone in my room and lying in bed, I take a moment to reflect on and reconsider my decisions. Not that I have any doubt I'm doing the good choice, but leaving my troop behind me is bound to change my life drastically. The real question is whether I'm up for the task. I don't want to be homeless again just because I made a stupid decision. I turn around, burying my head on the pillow. Too late to turn back anyway. The best thing to do now is to sleep and be ready for tomorrow. Cave? Why cave? I open my eyes, having no idea where I am. Looks like some sort of cave or circular cellar. Around me are twelve thrones carved in the rock. Oh, well, I guess you're getting your brand. Your brand is you can no longer sing. Whoops. Dreams shattered. <laughs> Arranged in a circle. I can't see any trace of a door or a window. No way out. I can feel the panic starting to settle. I don't know how I got there. I don't know how to leave. As I open my mouth to call for help, I realize I can't make any sound. I can't move either. What the fuck is going on? What is this place? Who are you? And what are you doing here? A deep voice echoes through the cave. I can't see where it's coming from. There's no trace of worry in the manly voice, only curiosity. It doesn't really reassure me. In front of me, the shadows suddenly seem to take shape, forming a creature that almost looks like someone. I can, I can then see, in a series of flashes of light, what looks like a complete skeleton, that of a canid, emerging from the shadows. I don't know how, but I immediately understand. The shape I see, these bones materializing, it's someone's brand, the gigantic brand of a really, really powerful person. I feel like my heart is going to explode in my chest. I've never been so terrified in my life. Hush, little one. I'm not here to hurt you. I can't. This is all just a dream, after all. And we risk nothing in our dreams. It's well known. The voice comes out of the shadows. I don't know what this is, but I can feel it watching me from head to toe, inspecting every part of my body, almost medically. Hmm. Don't you have a brand yet? Interesting. You shouldn't have access to this place, unless... Oh. I understand now. The brand is on your prostate. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just like, what's the most cursed conclusion to draw? You're one of the four, aren't you? That's going to make things a lot more interesting. One of the four? What is he talking about? What's happening? I try to think about an answer, an understanding, and I finally settle on a word. It's a dream. Nothing said here makes any sense or has any impact. That thought calms me down a bit. You're a little early to the party, so go back to sleep and don't think about it anymore. It's just a weird dream that you will soon forget.
With each new word coming from the shadows, I feel my eyelids grow heavy. I struggle to stay awake, not wanting to fall asleep in this forsaken place, in front of a stranger. We'll meet again. And then, the real game can begin. I sink like a stone in the water and fall back into a dreamless sleep. Prologue did the last thing say prologue or day one? Okay, I think it must have said prologue before, too. It's day two of the prologue. When I open my eyes again, I'm in, a, I'm in my room, all alone. There is no trace of a shadow, a cave, or anything like that. With a long sigh, I stretch slowly. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's one of the strangest dreams I've had in a while. Come to think of it, I can still feel a shiver going down my spine, making me shake a bit. I'm not used to remembering what happens in my sleep, so I'm not too <clears throat> so I'm not too surprised to be affected like that. I always had trouble waking up, and it's all the more true when no one is here to shake me up. I very much intend to take my time and enjoy my peace. No one to shake me up. The sudden realization that I'm all alone comes to me. For three years, I was surrounded by a dozen other people, and now it's just me. Of course, we have our own rooms when possible, but there is always someone to knock on my door and throw me out of bed. But here, there was no one to rush me, no one to push me, no one to tell me to move, only silence. Rager and the others are already gone. They were planning their departure a little before dawn, and I can see the sun shining through the window. My chest tightens as I realize my loneliness. It's weird to suddenly find myself in this situation. At any moment, I expect to see someone come in and interrupt me, or to hear a voice, a song. Nothing. Just my thoughts and a heavy silence. I shouldn't stay idle, so I fidget and jump out of bed before quivering with, when my paws hit the cold ground. If winter isn't here yet, it will be soon enough. The first snowfall of the year happened a few days earlier. And the temperature is not going to increase on my way to the capital. It's not called Frost Fang for nothing. Speaking of the trip, I can't afford to spend the, the morning doing nothing in this room, so I get dressed quickly before stuffing my belongings in my, pack, my backpack. I look at Erwin's belt and hang it from my hips, the sword dangling on the side. It's still too big for me and leans a bit to the side, but at least I'm not, defense, I'm not totally defenseless now. The wolf is right. Walking around all alone, unarmed and without a brand, is just asking to be killed out there, in the woods. Once I'm ready, I open the door and walk out into the hallways of the inn. At least, that's what I tried to do. Before I, fe I feel my paws get getting caught in something on the floor, causing me to fall over it. It was all but graceful. Shit, who put this mess on my doorstep? I get up as quickly as possible before looking back to see what tripped me. In front of my room is a small set of bags and other wrapped items. I see pieces of cake, cookies, a few nuts. Those are parting gifts that my companions couldn't give me yesterday. A wide smile stretches my lips, and I make an effort to, I have to make an effort to hold back a tear. I I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Thank you. I can't stop smiling while picking up my presents, slipping them into the free space left in my backpack. I just keep a bag of cookies in my paw. I'll put these delicious gifts to good use soon enough. It'll save me from having to, uh, to pay for lunch. Cookies? I hope I can thank you one day. Granted, if they're <clears throat> old-timey fantasy-ish cookies, they probably aren't. They might not be as, like, sugar-dense. It might be more meal-like in this context. I don't know. I'm just making shit up. I watched one Anne Reardon video about a fucking 3,000-year-old recipe, and now I'm an expert on sugar. Uh, behind our house, there is a mountain. Me and my spouse climb it under the rain. Going there, by the gods, is difficult. And I swear, it could kill an adult. I sing the lines with a hint of impatience in my voice 
I've been walking for hours and I'm sincerely starting to get sick of it. It started to snow two hours earlier. My feet are soaked. I'm starting to feel cold. On top of that, I'm quickly exhausting my classical repertoire and I'm going to have to switch to body songs if I want to keep busy. That's not necessarily something I want to do alone in the middle of the road. I must admit that when I left the, in the morning, I didn't. I expected a lot of other things. Let's just start over. I blew that one. I must admit that when I left in the morning, I expected a lot of things, but certainly not to be that bored. During my trips, I usually sing with my troop. I play card games, or I discuss... While traveling solo, my options are limited, so I find myself singing alone, doomed to only be able to exchange a few words with the even fewer travelers I meet from time to time. It's pretty hard to come up with an interesting variation of it's getting cold, I hope you have a good trip, during the few seconds of discussion I'm trying to enjoy. Come on, Eric. Let's stay focused. Think about your goal. You're about to enter Frostfang. You're going to enter this contest, crush the competition, and become a royal bard. You'll lift your head and keep walking, at least a little longer, before enjoying a little bit of rest. Determined, I lift my leg and take a new step when I feel my paw get stuck in something. Oh. Oh no. Please. Not again. As if time has slowed down, I feel my body, propelled at it by its momentum, leaning more and more dangerously forward as I see the snowy ground closing in on me. I barely have time to put my hands in front of me to try to soften the fall before I find finding myself with my muzzle buried in the snow. That's it. I can't take it anymore. I give up. The gods have obviously decided that it's my fate to stay on the ground, so who am I to fight their will? Congratulations! You won! Now that I've accepted my destiny, can I have my brand, pretty please? No answer, which is hardly surprising, especially since I didn't say anything out loud. <laughs> no one can still keep, uh, one can still keep on dreaming, I guess. Well, I can't really spend my days li lying in the snow. I would have to, what's this? I'm pretty sure the thing I tripped on just moved, and I'm absolutely sure that the branches on the ground aren't supposed to move by themselves. Help. It spoke. Oh no, it's someone. I ran into someone, fuck. As quickly as possible, I get up and turn to look at the mass buried under a thin layer of snow. At least, at least my fall allowed me to find the person on whom I've tripped, and who continues to talk weakly. I clear as much snow as possible from the unfortunate stranger, briefly noting that he is a falcon. I then stay focused on my task. I have bigger problems right now than figuring out what he's doing here. Considering the way he shakes and whispers while having clothes that aren't intended for the season, it looks like he's in hypothermia. I have to do something now. He's also got a loot, so he's definitely going to the same tournament. So basically you should leave him, so you can win. <laughs> Okay, Eric, stay focused. You you prepared yourself for this kind of situation. You know what to do. I have to get the falcon out of the snow right now to keep him awake and to warm him up. Hey, I'm here. I'll help you, but now I need you to talk to me, understood? Stay awake. It's important. Cold. Yes, it's cold. But I'll warm you up. Don't worry. I didn't need an answer. I'll to keep his mind occupied. Without waiting for an answer, I quickly run my paw over his shirt. Shit. It's wet with snow. He can't stay that way. Your clothes are wet. I have to take them off. Are you okay with it? No answer. That's bad. I have to hurry. I look to the sides of the road, trying to find a less expo exposed place to secure the falcon. A few meters from our position, I finally see a patch of dirt below a few trees partially protecting from the snowfall. It's far from perfect, but it'll do. We're going to move to a drier place. Just hold on to me. Still no answer. I slip my arm under the falcon's shoulder and carry him as best as I can, finally starting to feel him trying, without much success, to tighten his grip around me. He can still move. That's a small victory in itself. The process is neither easy nor pleasant, but I have no time to complain. 
Once I arrive, I quickly rummage through my bag to pull out a, a blanket and throw it on the ground. I don't exactly have time to pitch my tent yet. We'll do that. We'll do with what we have. The blanket should be cozy, and I hope the falcon will be too, soon enough. I lay him down and start removing his shirt, which seems to wake him up a bit. He opens a, th a tired eye, which makes it seem like he's looking at me without seeing me. What are doing? Your clothes are soaked. You'll never be able to get warm with that. So I'm going to remove them. Give you one of my shirts and bundle you up in a blanket. Then I'm going to start a fire to keep you warm. I'm sure it's something we will both enjoy. Thank you. We can only hope he stays awake now. Falling asleep in this kind of situations is rarely a good sign. I quickly remove, uh, quickly finish removing the falcon's clothes before pulling my spare outfit out of the bag. He's taller than me, but it'll do for now. Once the stranger dress, once the stranger dressed again, I roll him up in the blanket and take the time to observe him a little more closely. It's quite rare that we see species in our regions. This species in our regions. It's kind of this kind of falcon doesn't uh, generally don't like the temperatures here, with a few rare exceptions. So I don't often have the opportunity to see them from that close. His feathers seem quite str strange to me. They look incredibly smooth and soft. However, the weirdest thing about him are his eyes, or rather, what's under them. The gold thread that underlines each of his eyes seems directly attached to the feathers themselves, almost as if it's a natural part of his plumage. I've never seen this before, but I've heard about it and know the meanings of such decoration. My mysterious stranger is not a citizen of the kingdom. He's Macadian, and this simple fact makes him even more interesting to me. However, he will only be interesting as long as he's alive. Let's not rush things. I unwrap a small package hanging by the side of my bag, revealing a series of branches and straw. That's all I need to start a fire, at least until I find a few dry branches. Branches and branches. You already have branches. I guess more branches. I quickly build the base of my fire while turning to the falcon to start a discussion. My name's Eric, by the way. What's yours? Aket. Ha! Huh, I knew it. You're Macadian, aren't you? I... Yes. Is it that obvious? The gold under his eyes. The gold under your eyes. Also, only a Macadian would walk around so scantily clad in this kind of weather. You're used to the heat of the desert, not our good old cold. I smile, trying to cheer him up with the hope of at least a slight grin. Alas, I only win a sigh. Looks like my audience is quite difficult to please. I usually have better reactions. I guess you're right. Didn't expect the weather to be so cold. Thanks for finding me. And everything else. Everyone would have done the same. You're just lucky I ran into you. Literally, in that case. I'm trying my best to wink this time. Ha! <laughs> A smile. Very discreet, but it's there. My self-proclaimed legendary sense of humor strikes again. Thank the gods for that, indeed. Things could have been a lot worse. It takes a few seconds to look around as I strike some stones with my lighter, producing a few sparks that quickly ignite the straw, a gentle heat spreading slowly around us. I can't see my loot. Did you put it somewhere safe? Your loot? I give him a puzzled look, having no idea what he's talking about, and I can see the interrogation in his eyes quickly being replaced by sheer panic. I had a loot with me. Tell me you picked it up, please. I, uh, don't think I saw anything. I was kind of busy trying to get you out of the snow, save your life, you know. All this and all that. All I have for an answer is an, ag is an anguished moan. He obviously cares very much about his loot. I sigh as I get up, pointing my finger at him. I'm going to take a look and try to find it. You don't do anything silly, and you don't move. You have to warm up, okay? He answers me by grumbling. Great. I hope I'll get- I hope I'll get his instrument back, because I'm not traveling with a grumpy falcon. 
Going back to where I found him, I keep my eyes on the snow-covered road. Instruments aren't my specialty, but I know that a prolonged stay in this environment will do it no good. The sooner I find this loot, the better I, it will be for it... The better... The better it will be... The better, though, the, the better it will be both for it and its owner. This is not where I thought the sentence was going. Not to mention that the sun started to set. I can feel the temperature dropping, and even, and even I am starting to feel cold. I would greatly appreciate being near the fire quickly, soon. After a few moments of rummaging, I quickly, I finally spot a bump in the snow. Please let, let this God's forsaken. Please be this god's forsaken instrument. In an instant, I bend down and brush off the snow accumulated on the instrument and Achmet's bag. To think about it, the strain it's strange that he didn't worry about his belongings at all. Once I feel the neck of the loot under my fingers, I lift it up and take a quick glance at the instrument to look at its condition and... Oh, fuck. I understand his, his concern now. Who is this guy, and how can he afford this? It's clearly the most beautiful instrument I've been able to lay my eyes upon. Kill him. <laughs> the wood is entirely black. I think it's called... Ebony? No, I think it's called wood. I believe it... I believe it's the word. I've been... I've seen such a material once. When a nobleman, nobleman tried to impress us with a piece of furniture that cost him a fortune. On top of that... The wood is finely etched with a series of curves and circles that emphasize the shapes of the loot, and it's covered with a layer of shiny varnish that, which seems to have totally protected the instrument from the snow. I can also see that there are gold threads decorating some of the engravings, contrasting with the dark coloring of the wood. The end result is absolutely stunning, and clearly very, very expensive. I could sell it and live more than, comfort more than comfortably for years. Maybe even a year. What is Aket's true identity, and how could I put his talents on such... And how could he put his talents on such a treasure? Did you find it? I must have spent more time than I thought looking at the loot. I get up quickly before heading back towards our camp. Yeah, I found your loot, and your bag too. Everything seems to be in good condition, so no need to worry. I quickly come closer to the campfire while uh, while Akat is busy rubbing his arms in an attempt to warm up. I would avoid doing that if I were you. I know it looks like a, it looks like a good idea, but I believe me, it's not. What are you talking about? Your arms. You're going to warm up too quickly, and it's not good for you. Just sit still and let the warmth of the fire do its job. I will also heat some water so you can have something to, something hot to drink. Oh, thanks. I didn't know. You're welcome. Even here in the north, it's not common knowledge. It's a reflex to try to warm up after all. That problem being solved, I hand him his bag and his loot. If he barely glanced at his belongings before throwing them on the ground, he, take, he gently takes his instrument and inspects it from all angles, slowly sliding his fingers along the curves of the wood. He clearly cares about this loot, and not that I've seen it. I, and now that I've seen it, I can fully understand him. If I had such a masterfully crafted work of art between my hands, I'm sure I could take care of it with the utmost respect as well. Hey, Akat, can I ask you a question? Hmm? Oh, yeah, sure. What do you want to know? It's been a while since I've been in the business now, and I've never seen a loot like this. How'd you manage to have something that like that? It's absolutely beautiful. Oh. I can understand why. Wait, which business? Are you a musician too? In the rush, I did not have time to properly introduce myself. I bow to him with a quick smile, mimicking an exaggerated re uh, reference, reverence as I look in his eyes. Eric from Skarna, singer, dancer, and wanderer. Nice to meet you. I lower my head briefly and stick my tongue out at the falcon, who is kind enough to laugh briefly. At least we seem to be getting off on the right foot. Well, Eric from Skarna, 
It's a pleasure to meet you, too. I always appreciate the presence of another art connoisseur, although I'm afraid that I am just a lute player. A, mu a musician and a singer? We are made to get along. It would appear so. That doesn't answer my question, though. I know a bunch of musicians who'd be willing to kill someone to get that loot. How did you come into possession of it? The story might not be as exciting as you could think. For a few years, I was a musician for a Mercadian general. An old man, enriched by the wars he had waged and exhausted by them. He loved my music. He would call me to his room just to play something until he fell asleep. He's the one who gave me this loot, to thank me for what I was doing for him. At least, that's what he told me at the time. How'd you end up here? Seemed He seemed to take good care of you. I... I needed a change of scenery. To see the world. I notice his hesitation, but I'm not going to dig any further. We just met, and if he doesn't feel like answering me, I'm not going to force it. However, being a musician on the road to Frostfang... Meeting a musician on the road to Frostfang at the same time as me... That can only mean one thing. It seems that I met my first competitor. So, I guess you're on your way to the capital trying to become the next royal bard, am I right? That's right. I heard about the contest organized by the two kings, Lusk and Aeon. And I couldn't miss such an opportunity. In that case, I hope you're ready to see me win. Oh, really? Do you think you can do better than me when I already have experience serving a court? I get smiles as he looks at me, getting caught up in his little contest of arrogance between us. I smile back at him while stuffing snow in an iron bin before placing it on the fire. Because you think that I never had to sing in front of the nobility, huh? Now that Know that I had the pleasure of giving public and private performances to the greatest nobles of the kingdom. But you never had royalty in your audience, did you? He looks at me all proud of himself, obviously waiting for an answer. Honestly, what am I supposed to say to that? Of course I never played for a king. I try to find some witty remark, but it looks like this time I have to concede the victory to Akat. No. But there is a first time for everything. He smiles at me again, and I see him blinking tiredly. With all this chatting, I almost forgot that he must be exhausted after his involuntary nap in the snow. But I can't allow him to sleep. Not yet. He would have to drink something first, just to get some heat in his stomach. After briefly rummaging through my bag, I pull out a small pouch of weed. A mixture of nettle, mint, and sage. I toss a pitch into the melted snow on the fire. Into the melted snow on the- oh, that's right, the- the drink. They're making tea. I know you're tired, but try to stay awake a little longer, will you? You need to drink something warm. Hmm? Alright, alright. He yawns loudly after answering. He looks really drained from everything. Don't make me slap you to keep your eyes open. You wouldn't dare. You would be surprised to see what I would dare to do. I do my best to try and look threatening and only get one of the most dubious looks in response. I guess looking scary while being a white rabbit half the size of everyone around you is more complicated than I thought. After a few seconds of looking at each other with trembling lips, we both burst out laughing. While I just met him, I got along surprisingly well with that cat. I guess saving someone's life can make things easier. I finally take out my cup, filling it with the herbal tea that I had warmed before giving it to the falcon. He holds it for a moment between his talons. The warmth of the beverage must do him good. While he's busy drinking and warming up, I quickly set up the tent hanging from my bag, so we can at least sleep in some form of shelter. After a while, I start to hear a noise, and turning around, I see that Akhet I see Akhet with his head lowered to his chest, snoring softly, his talons still lightly clamping his cup. At least he will have drunk something. I hope he doesn't get sick now. Just have to finish setting up this tent. Put us both inside and I can fall asleep too. I hope there'll be no bad dreams this time. I really don't need this right now. 
All right, well, that's more or less the end of that, I think, but this will be a little preview. I'm out of time. I gotta go. But this has been Nevin. If you want to check this game out, there's a link to it in the description. And also, you can check out the link to the playlist. It's just to see just dozens of these previews, because goodness, there sure are a lot of visual novels. And I'll see you guys next week for yet another one.